Firstly, Neil, thank you very much for joining me today. You're welcome. You obviously started your own professional career at Southampton, you know, given you from this area. How did that first come about? Um, Southampton had a really good scouting system in the North East. So um, I was playing for Darton Boys and there was a scout there, a lad called Jack Robson. Uh, spotted it, had a chat with me dad. And back then, I was 13, 12, 13, um, you couldn't sign forms with any club until you were 14, associated schoolboy forms. So I went down, had a few trials, and they offered me associated schoolboy forms, signed it, and 16 obviously signed apprenticeship forms as well. So I had two years down there, and then and you get the pro contract offer, and when it started from there. Yeah, you obviously you know made the move back to Middlesbrough. You know we, we've spoken about the the journey at Southampton and, and getting to that point where you become a professional. What was the moment like, sort of hearing the first whispers that you you might be going back home, so to speak? There wasn't any whispers. To be fair, it was just a phone call out the blue by my manager Dave Jones and said that um, Brian Robson had made contact and we've agreed a fee. It's entirely up to you. And I've been at Southampton for 12 years, and I just thought it was a great opportunity to come back home. Um, and I knew Middlesbrough were on the up, you know, the likes of uh, Emerson, um, Craig Gignett, people like that, uh, Nigel Pearson, they were at the football club, Paul Merson, Andy Townsend, who I knew at my time at Southampton. So I just decided, thought, you know, it's a good move to, it's a good move for me. I went up, spoke to Brian Robson. I was in his office 10 minutes and the deal was done. So, um, yeah, I never even had the time to thank the Southampton fans or anything like that. It was just really quickly done and, you know, a great move for me. Yeah, you, you mentioned some of the names there that were at Middlesbrough at the time, you know, Emerson, um, Nigel Pearce and even the manager, Brian Robson. I mean, there was certainly some characters at the club at, at that time. Just talk me through what that dressing room was like. Well, the dressing room was ridiculously good. Um, you're going into games, looking at the opposition and thinking, you know, we're going to beat you today, you ain't going to beat us, because we had a really good dressing room, lots of leaders in there, you know, I've mentioned them players, Robbie Musto, Stevie Vickers, people like that who were, you know, out and out pros, and um, Robbo just added players, you know, every now and then, and he brought some great players into the football club, and in that first season that I signed, went to Wembley, albeit beaten after extra time against Chelsea 2-0 but got promotion to the Premier League which was our main aim. Yeah and skipping forward now to the time where you start to think you know that you, your playing career is coming towards the end. What was your original plans um, you know obviously with, you, with your role now you're working within an academy when you first decided you know I'm going to stop playing did you want to work within an academy you know you've had that experience yourself or was it more coaching that you were interested in? Um, I took my coaching badges straight away. I took them when I was playing at Darlington, finished my career at Darlington. Um, I don't think I had a plan. I think it was just to stay in football. Um, loved coaching, loved that side of it. It was totally different to being a player. You know, player, you just come in and you look after so well. You get into games and that's what you, you know, that's why you become a footballer. You'd love the, you know, the surroundings of match days, you know, the, the, the build up to it and, you know, I miss that massively, that's the one thing I miss, but um, it was just to stay in the game and sort of, I've been under some good managers, you know, and I just thought, well, I could, I've got a little bit to offer, I feel, so, you know, going into the coaching side and also the management side, you know, I really enjoyed. This side, I mean, is totally different, but I still I still love what I do, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to work at the football club because... Uh, you know, I've got a, a rapport with the fans, and, and and I had rapport with the fans, and also the, you know, with the BBC were coming up as well. It's it it was good, but no, I, I mean the football club for me is has been brilliant for me. Four years ago, it, it comes about you initially joined the football club back again um, as loan manager, and then went on to become you know academy ambassador and also um, in charge of, of player welfare. How did that um, move come about and, and what do those roles sort of um, involve? Um, well, Neil Bowser, Craig Little rang me um, and asked me there was a role, if I fancied it, uh, at the football club, told me what it was all about, the loans manager and obviously the player care. Um, 
Look, it was loans at first, and the player care came later on. It was just too good to turn down. Um, you know, to get back into the football club is something I've always wanted to do. And yeah, it was. I just seen Neil and and, and Craig and see, yeah, I want to I want to come on board. So you know, it was good. Um, speaking to the the lads that go out on loan, looking after them, making sure that they're okay, making sure that where they're staying they're okay. Um, but that role you get to you get to learn about the role because each individual player are quite different. Some like to be centred in the town when they go to football clubs. Some like to be put away in the countryside and left to their own devices. And you know, if we've had a couple of loans that haven't gone quite well in terms of them performing, and that's purely because probably the location where they're staying. So, as you say, as I said, you learn you learn all the time about the players and. It's up to them when they do go on loan and if the environment's right to perform. But we're there, I'm there as a um, as a guide and, and to help them in their journey, you know, and they can ring me and I'll ring them every week speaking about how they're getting on, you know, everything okay, you know, and if they need any advice from me, that's what they do. They give me that advice but, um, and I'll try and help them as much as I can. But um, I get to go see them train at their clubs, uh, a lot of travelling, get to watch them in games, especially uh, you know if, if the Borough are playing. I'm going up to Scunthorpe on Saturday to watch Scunthorpe play. Uh, there's two players playing there that we've got loaned out, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good job. And then obviously the uh, player care side of it is happened, I would say, two or three years ago. Um, and it's, that's something that I really enjoy. Obviously, player care is is massive now in football. Um, we we have players that get released, and my role is to try and get them football clubs or to help them as much as they can in terms of where they want to go. So whether it's education, whether it's going over to the states, whether it's staying in football and, and pitching them at a, a level that we feel they'll com be comfortable at, and you know that's what I do. So so far we've had seven, I think, under 16s leavers this year, and. It was my job, it was actually last year, it was my job to try and get them clubs and out of the seven, five have got clubs signed on. My son is actually being released and he's got a club, he's going to Carlisle, got a scholarship at Carlisle for two years. And there's only two players that haven't quite got anything yet, but I'm working on that and hopefully, you know, them two will be tied up as well. But um, to see the players go from Middlesbrough and get released, to see how disheartened they were, how sad they were, because some of them have been in for a very long time. And for me to get them to help them get clubs, you know they've obviously got to go on trial and perform. But um, to make that initial contact, send their what we do, we send their clips out to clubs, and they come back to us, and then I'll pass the numbers on to the parents, and then they'll go from there. So yeah, it's it's very rewarding to see the players sign up for other clubs. Yeah, and of course yesterday, pretty timely. Of course, doing this today, the the official um, program for, for aftercare at the club was announced. Um, I know originally there's, there's always been aftercare at the club, but in terms of what this program is now going to offer, what is that doing to you know benefit um, you know as you say lads that, that might leave the academy and, and initially not find another club? Well, there's a lot more people involved uh, in the aftercare now. You know all the coaches that have coached them will be involved in it. Our sports science, our uh, psych as well will be involved in it. Um, education side will be involved in it because there's plenty of routes where they might want to go to as I said mentioned before America we've had two guys go over to America and help them get over there so there's lots of rules for people to be involved in obviously my role is still the same you have to gauge what they want because at first when you've been uh, released obviously um, it's disheartening it's you know, at the end of the day it's They've been in football, some of them, since they were seven year old. And uh, to be released when you're 16, is, 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 it can be difficult. So, um, you know, you, you leave them for a few days, speak to the parents, speak to them, what do they feel and they want to stay in football. Some want to go education. There was a, I can remember a guy wanted to be follow his mum and dad into the medicine, be a doctor. And he's, you know, training to do that as well. So, yeah, we, we help them as much as we can. And the, I would say, all the lads that do get released, we make sure that they are looked after. Yeah, and then just finally, there's been 
a, a few stories of, of players, both you know younger and you know finishing the career, coming out and, and speaking about the mental health. It's such a, a big topic, especially you know in a, a male um, type of environment like like football is. Do you think with a program like this, that can I don't want to say be be nipped in the bud, but almost you know treated so that they don't feel if they are released and they don't know what they're going to do next. They have to bottle up the emotions and and you know hide it from people. Do you think that will help with the mental health side of things? Well, the first thing we do is sit them down and you know there'll be a group of us. We are here to help you. We we'll help you on your next journey, whether it's in football, whether it's in education, whether it whatever you want to do. We will give you that support that will get you to where you want to go. And um, I just think the aftercare, as I said before, the aftercare side is totally changed in football. When I was a player, I know some of my friends that were at Southampton with me, with me, they never got pro contracts. And once they left, that was it. Left their own devices, you get on with it. You know, some of them worked their way back into football. Some got, you know, one day jobs and, 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 and did it that way. But um, with the aftercare that we've put in place, 100% the support will be there for our boys. You know, some, as I said before, have been in since we were seven, eight year old, a long, long time, and we have a duty of care to make sure these boys are looked after really well, and we will do that and we will continue doing it.